garden and I'm the aquarium lead here at the McMurdo Aquarium, or as I like to call it the Query Lab Aquarium. <laughs> and the town and the facility, so we help them get the science um, done that they need to do. We have three groups here working at the aquarium this summer. Uh, we have a group that studies maybe breaks and sea spiders, another group um, run by Ann Todgem that works with um, juvenile fish development and stresses and temperature and um, ocean acidification. And we have a third group that works with an underwater robot that they send under the ice. properly so the scientists can do their work. Um, one of the things I check daily is to make sure that the pump is on and that the pump is working. And this um, shows the gallons per minute or the flow rate, so we want to make sure that that is functioning properly, which it is. Over here, we have a small gauge that measures the temperature to make sure that the water is the correct temperature and that it stays cold enough because all of these fish, as you know, need to be in less than freezing, or in colder than freezing waters. Um, the water flows through here in these giant big pipes, big gray pipes, and they also pipe through the whole aquarium on a big open system. So all the valves are open and making sure that everything is flowing properly into all the, the drops that it needs to go to. Another thing that we check over here is this gauge to make sure that the pressure is at the right spot. And that's the pounds per square inch, the PSI, to make sure that the pump is, is flowing with enough energy to push all the water around the aquarium. One of the other things that I'm responsible for is to make sure that all of the water is flowing properly, that none of the tanks are overflowing. As you can see here, we have some complicated um, water systems, and that is for science to regulate temperatures in certain tanks and certain areas and treatments. Um, but here, I just want to make sure that the facility is okay and that the scientists can work in their environment properly. And we do run around to make sure that all the temperature and all the tanks are the right temperature other than the treatments, that the water is as cold as it needs to be. So we also have to make sure that the doors um, stay closed so any outside temperature doesn't affect it. And also um, we're careful of noise and things like that since some, some uh, experiments may be sensitive. One of the things we do is go outside every day to make sure that the area is clear of snow and ice. And also we can show you where the water is piped into the aquarium. So over there, um, just beyond that green building, is the sea ice, and there's a little fish hut over there um, called Fish Hut 19. It's also called the jetty, as there is a rock jetty underneath, but there's also the intake nearby, and that's where we pipe the seawater from. So we pipe it up from under, from the seawater, or under the sea ice over there, all the way up. All of those pipes are insulated and it pulls all the way up from beyond, just beyond that green building up here to the Crary Lab and into this aquarium. goes the Tritoniella belli in a race for the other side of the rock. Hanson and I and Borks. 
and the Bernies and Hans and I, um, they live at the bottom. So they only eat food that floats in front of their face, where the Borks is a silver guy over here. And those guys are what's called cryopelagic, or they live up between the ice and the water. So they live in the water, but, but right at the top under the ice. All of these fish are named after um, men from the first, ex uh, first landing on Antarctica, so the expedition in 1899, the Southern Cross Expedition. Um, they may have been the ones that discovered them, but these fish um, exhibit an interesting tank behavior where they come to the top, which is not something that they would do in the wild. They're usually just laying on the bottom, and, and maybe they'll swim a few feet here and there, but they don't really move around so much. But here they're a little confused by maybe the lights or the activity above. segments. These fit together to form a really long tube-shaped robot. Um, the robot is modular, meaning that instruments can be taken out and replaced depending on what types of things they're trying to measure underneath the water, whether that's salinity or oxygen or eventually they're hoping to take water samples. Um, and all of those things can be swapped in and out um, depending on what they need it for. This year they're taking it out to a glacier that's far away from where we are now, but it's still in Antarctica. Um, they'll be drilling a big hole through that glacier and dropping this robot down to the water below to measure the water interaction with the ice below the, below the glacier. Right now they're testing it um, both outside uh, on the sea ice and then sometimes they'll even put it into these aquarium tanks to check the buoyancy every once in a while. 